they've got three of them already. <laughs> Sit there on your computer and nothing's going to happen. Okay. If you were in Christchurch, no power, no phone lines, no VPD. Isn't that a problem for VPD? Okay. So, and in fact, this sort of artistic license, the atmosphere that's been created for the beginning of this debate would have not been possible in the VPD. <laughs> so, you know, that is an issue. How many of you, when you talk to your teachers at your schools and say, what is the problem with technology? They'll say, technology. It's the problem. Why? Because it never works. Half the time it's broken, the other time you're confused. If you said, well, get on our virtual professional development course. They're not coming to it. They would rather meet people face to face. Human contact. We are herd animals. We want to be able to talk to each other in a way that allows us free and easy conversation. Not, hello, oops, sorry, what was that? You had a good quote. No, no, you need to talk one at a time. Now, are you on mute? No, you're not. Well, then you're causing a problem here. Okay, Jane, you can talk now. Well done, Jane. Next, uh, Eddie. How's that? That's a stunted sort of conversation, if you ask me. Okay. And then, oh, sorry, quite, quite, oh, this, this, oh, man, the internet is so bad here. I, I can't quite hear you. You're breaking up. How many times have you experienced that? Wouldn't it be nice to sit down with a cup of coffee, four people at the table, and be able to interchange my little chip bucket? Okay, um, initially I wanted to be on that team. <laughs> well, really good. Well, face to face, I thought that's where it's at. But really, after talking to my fellow colleagues, um, man, I'm not going to sit here, I'm not going to beg the face to face because we have enough argument, I think, on our side to really to clean up this debate just by thinking of the positive things about, um, about virtual PD. Um, we've got you can, you can do it from anywhere around the world at any time. Um, so if, if we're doing it, it can be tailored in a way that if we're doing PD on a, on a particular area, we can get experts from China, we can get experts from America to come in and sit on the meetings and educate everyone. So we're not just pulling from the people in the local area or even in New Zealand, you know, to get everyone to fly down here, but we can pull people from all over the, all over the world. Um, if you're doing reading assignments, you know, we can get professional authors in to talk about their books and how they and how they do it. Or it can be really tailored to those specific PD needs, um, and it's also not restricted to um, that moment. It's ongoing through email, through it can be 24/7 through Ming. You could, it's a progressive thing. Sorry, um, and it's time saving as well because we're all very busy people, and to organise something like this, we've got to take a day off of our education, you know, teaching kids, and we've got a, you know, this could have been done quite easily at the end of the day, um, take up an hour or so online, and we could be, we could be being and done, rather than having to take this big time out of our, out of our schedule. Cost of flying people down here, I mean, it's quite, it's a known fact that the um, cost of this actual thing that we're in at the moment, I think from our figures we figured out, it's about 12,000% more than what it would have cost if we did it through virtual PD, and it's a staggering amount, really, when you have to think about it. It's, it's, it's costing now, with, with the government and, and the funds so being as tight as they are now. two minutes. Um, <laughs> 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 Next we need to. Um, face to face is good for your relationships, for all of your relationships. 
Um, it's a lot easier to talk to people face to face. You pick up on visual clues. Um, there's lots of things that go unsaid just by a facial expression. You feel supported. You can see clearly right away if they understand or if they don't understand. Um, often when we're talking online, just like um, we were saying before, um, it's one at a time. And often, opportunities to jump in um, spur the moment when you have something to say are lost. Also, nodding in agreement or, you know, querying things, you miss out on those opportunities and, and you've moved on by the time you get to have a say. Um, another thing that we um, think is of importance is that lifelong friendships can be made here. Um, and often they're not made online, but they're made over dinner or over a lunchtime conversation, talking about what you have in common. Often things that don't have anything to do with the purpose that we're here for today, um, but are a starting point to start um, a relationship that can last years. Um, and, and as well, there are those informal chats that happen um, between sessions um, that are um, off and off on tangents that, um, that later we come back to and that can still support our learning. And um, finally, um, you get to get away from your partner. <laughs> I know my partner tonight will be um, watching sport all evening and having a heart attack on a plate for dinner. Uh, which probably wouldn't be happening if I was home. So he will be enjoying himself and be happy to see me tomorrow. So face-to-face um, -face PD is good for all of your relationships. You've been looking to remind us. Okay. Um, I just want to start off with a question. Yeah, te Papa. What's the point? What's the point of this um, virtual learning um, professional development? I personally believe it's about knowledge. It's not about um, building a rapport with, uh, with um, people here. It's not about building those lifelong relationships. We're all about um, developing our own knowledge. Um, VPLD, it's an ongoing process. It's not one yearly event. If problems occur during the year, um, the weekly meetings that, that we set up with our advisors and with our uh, mentors will address these problems. Personally, I, I um, have a meeting with a very knowledgeable person that works for the Ministry of Education, and um, we get to troubleshoot ideas. Uh, also, the time the time uh, slots the time slots we have are 40 to 40 minutes to an hour. That, that time there is, is short, it's sharp, but it's also to the point. Whereas you've got to ask yourself the question for these events here, it's uh, time is half past three, we'll nearly keep moving on to, to later in the afternoon, how much information are, are we keeping? Um, the, last, the last factor I would like to discuss is, is um, BPLD. Uh, virtual learning is uh, about individualising uh, plans. Your problem may not be someone else's problem. If, I, if I'm having a problem with Moodle or with uh, Ning, then you guys may not have the same problem. So why do you need to sit in listening to those problems when you already know what's happening? Thank you. Okay. Simply number three. Now, a couple of days ago, I took my to see the movie, one of the new ones, Super 8. You spill big one, and pretty early on, there's one another the train crash, and it's colossal. They're sort of sitting there, watching the big screen, train crash, and I was thinking, that's great, you know, I'm just watching this, but it's not quite the same as actually being in a train wreck of your own. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that, that is basically the, the point here, okay? Hi Linda, nice to see you. You're looking very flat and diminished there. I mean, <laughs> and really, if I actually just went around to the side, gosh, I could keep actually following around, so long as Rachel keeps moving there. So we got. Yeah, but the thing is that you can't see it, and the context isn't there. It's, it's sort of like going to the movie. Same script, same stage show. You know, there's this 
less than subtle difference in context. One of them is very two-dimensional, flat, and it's sort of like you're there and you're watching it. And so many movies actually have to rely on special effects. Now, unfortunately, the Lynn's not going to be able to provide any special effects there. <laughs> And <laughs> unless you want to, <laughs> that's as good as it's going to get. So, <laughs> yes. we can actually have a real party here because if we go around, we can meet people, and you can actually touch them, we can push them over. And it's the context, it's the actual doing, it's the experience which makes it worthwhile. The content is always going to vary. There's no set program. And besides, the real money shot, I mean, certainly Sorry, we know that John, there's... that's two minutes. Thank you very much. Excellent. Oh, well done. Well, that final. Um, first of all, we should say yeah, it's great that uh, Linda can be here at all. And she wouldn't be if it wasn't for you. So, um, but there are a couple of uh, groups of people I'd like to mention who uh, can really benefit from when virtual PD is accessible to all people. Um, and there are certain people that would have trouble getting into a room like this, certain people that have trouble getting away from where they are, um, and uh, say physically, physically handicapped or, or other support who can who can operate from their own from their own space and, and do that virtually. So that's what. Um, another one, another group of people that is people that want to get to know people of different backgrounds and cultures and different um, uh, languages. So just by being virtual, you can actually get in touch with a whole lot of people that you wouldn't come across normally, and um, and that's a great way to, uh, to to grow your understanding of other people. So um, for for all of the good arguments my colleagues have said. We just think virtual is a piece. Okay, now we're going to move on to rebuttals. So you're going to choose a spokesperson from either side to reply to some of the arguments that were made on the other side. Do you need any time to prepare for this or are you no, ready to go? Try to okay, <laughs> which side want to go to, wants to go first? Let them go first. <laughs> happy to go first? Yeah, the other, the other side is still trying to get the connection. That's all right. We've got our rebuttal specialist. Yep. Ready to go? Well, I'm just surprised that you. Yeah, is that all? Oh, that, oh. No, 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 it's yeah, a, you, you're there. I'm really surprised you're even here because if you really believed, had the conviction of your argument, you'd be online. You'd have sent me a tweet. Or surely you would have posted a Facebook message. I don't, I don't understand why you're present. So that confuses me somewhat. Um, also, um, you know, we're a bicultural nation. How are we going to respect Maori Tango and Tango Maori? How am I going to hongi somebody online? You know? How am I doing the me here? You know, somebody could actually be online surfing something inappropriate. I mean, where's the, you know, that's really just not, 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 not comfortable for me. Um, secondly, boys, you know, you're, you're global warming. I mean, you know, all this, we're killing polar bears by this. You know, this we're not killing anybody. Right? <laughs> you know, there are 10 million appliances, 10 million appliances in homes at the moment being used, using up electricity, you know, we're not using up appliances. You know, we're, using lot, yeah, we're doing a lot of damage by using you know, electrical devices like this. I think we've got to stop. It's, it's quite obvious. Um, also, look, look at the three of us. Look at us. Take a moment, look at our glasses. <laughs> <laughs> we have to spend a lot of money on opticians and eye tests. <laughs> I didn't wear glasses until I started looking at a bloody computer. It's really, you know, it's, 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 it's the cost. The, you know, the, the cost that we're not really taking into account yet. Um, also, think about the fact that uh, we, 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 something. Uh, we are. Um, oh, oh. It's just so much. Where did you go? Um, you know, I'll, my final point will be this, I think. The Matrix. Great film, for the first one, anyway. Ultimately, Neo did take a pill. <laughs> he didn't lie there in a virtual world with his amniotic fluid and stuff. He was given a choice. He was told, you can come out of this kind of virtual world, or you can take the pill and go down the rabbit hole and experience what life is really like. He decided to do that. So I respect that. <laughs> I can't rebuttal the rebuttal, can I? Yes, yes I can. can Neo definitely didn't go and tackle the um, dude with like a hammer and axe. He definitely used the mechanical devices as well to attack him. But um, <laughs> he didn't quite go and try to chop him with his hands or anything. Um, 
I'm surprised why you guys are here too if you believe in face to face because I thought we're part of a virtual learning professional development kind of thing as well. So it kind of negates that as well. Um, and it's pretty difficult to rebuttal you guys because I'm really trying to figure out what arguments you've actually come up with. To be honest. Um, well, the, first, the first half was spent rebuttaling why virtual learning isn't very good, and the second half was talking about train weeks. So I'm not really too sure what's that got to do with um, face to face, but we have got a few things. Um, carbon footprint, with having to transport people over in planes over to here as well, I think. The amount of jet fuel that's used in order to transport people here probably outweighs a few computers that might be turned on every now and again. Um, hi Linda, really good to see you here. Virtual learning at its best, which is really good, so she's able to communicate really well. Um, multiculture? No? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he doesn't have a laptop. Now, Technology problems, many of you were in here last year, I think it was, Hazel, when we had a few technology problems, face-to-face -face meeting. <laughs> so you may face them in, we, we couldn't, didn't have Wi-Fi, which even in a face-to-face -face meeting, we made, it, made it very difficult as well because we had no internet connection. So <laughs> not only happens in, it probably does happen a little bit with the virtual, but it happens also in the face-to-face, -face, so that's not just exclusive. Um, teachers are also the worst person to have face to face because we never listen. We're always talking about other stuff, so people are talking, <laughs> don't pay any attention anyway. Don't miss out on expressions because Linda can see my expression right now, I can see Linda's expression right now, so you still have that personal. I can't. What? Yeah. 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 <laughs> People never meet and they get married. So we do wrong relationships. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, two minutes. So thank you very much for summing up sort of some of the issues around face to face and the virtual. We've got to think about relationships, our personal ones as well as our colleagues. We've got to think about the cultural side of things. Whether you want to actually be in a train wreck or not, <laughs> uh, whether you want to save the planet. So, what what we had there in 15 minutes, I think you came up with some some really sort of nuggets. You, you hit some nails on the head. So, what what I would like to do now is just ask Christian the point. audience. We we we'll, 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 we'll vote first, we and then you can ask questions. So. What I'd like the audience to do is, and I've got some chocolate fig. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so who believes that the face-to-face -face group made the best case on the note? If you can put your hand up, please. Oh, you can vote for yourself. Oh, you can. You can vote for yourself. You're in trouble. So, uh, a face-to-face -face win. <laughs> 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 Which means we don't have to come That's back it. tomorrow. <laughs> 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 no, we do. They can come on live. Wow, whole pack of each. Oh, no. Room chocolate. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to go and get those chocolate fish, I can have virtual fish. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to do now is just open up the floor to questions and just general discussions. So, dive on in. So, I, I know I was um, for the face to face, but in all honesty, um, with regard to two teachers and talking to them about virtual professional learning development for someone like me who and Linda and Rachel and and um, Rick and Jared who do a lot of stuff already and and so and Joel who do a lot of stuff already in the virtual environment uh, in, in terms of teaching and stuff like that Sonia I forgot and um, we're used to that but it's it's something very new and quite strange and the feedback I've had from teachers who have get them to go into their first video conference meeting, say with a bunch of English teachers or 
physics teachers or whatever, their responses will, it was quite a stunted conversation and they don't really like it very much. Um, and so given that that's their first experience, I wonder how we could actually say to them, hey, this is a good way to go. You know, and, and, and one of my concerns is, is uh, and I did, did write it down, I said we, we're very much, um, in terms of our education system, we're an outcomes-based education system. We're looking at the outcomes. And I think we need to be thinking about, when we come to professional development, I know we need to be looking at the outcomes. And if our inputs aren't right, we're not going to get the outcome. So I, I, it's, it's a question that concerns me, to say how do we get teachers to actually accept this mode of professional learning in a way that's going to have a positive outcome for them. If I work in, um, don't work in education, but I do. Um, <laughs> I'm not a school teacher, I was a school teacher, but we, we have issues, I was sort of saying what you were saying. Um, I work in the addiction sector um, with clinicians right, away, right across the country. And the big argument against online, we've set up platforms in our work with um, Mahara and Moodle, and we're trying to do online um, work about professional development for clinicians that work with addiction clients across the country. And the issue that comes up time and time again um, is the use of platforms and things don't work and why we're using it and um, it freezes all the time. And if you have to push three buttons, I don't want to do it. Um, and that's something, and, and the same thing happens with, with our client, the kids we work with, I've got a, an online class with um, year 13 kids and the same thing happens with them. If it freezes, their experience is bad, they don't want to come back. And I think that's what we need to look at, try and develop in this area. You don't have to, like the whole Moodle Mahara thing, when you've got Moodle linked up, you can't go straight onto Mahara, the you know, there are issues around that aspect and things like that that need to be sorted out, but um, I just put in our point across, we get the same thing in ours. And people are saying we'd rather have that engagement, we'd rather meet people, you know, like we're arguing, I'm not, I'm not arguing for them, but that's the sort of thing against online learning, and it comes up time and time again. And costs, I suppose, not. yeah. Can I just ask Robert and maybe to um, explain why he's here? Because he's not in education, but is in education. One of the reasons he's here. Correct me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, I've sort of come here because I'm on two, two hats. I've got sort of a few hats on. Um, but the um, main thing I do at the moment, I've, like I've just explained, I work with the addiction sector and we set up a um, virtual learning program for year 13 students because there's not enough young people working in the addiction sector and you know with the rise of use of drugs and alcohol and things with young people you need more young people to connect with them and none of them are working in the sector. Um, the average age in the addiction sector is, is 50 and it's climbing and it's climbing quite steadily and there's no young people coming in and that's fueled by lots of reasons. Um, so we set up an <coughs> online program across the country where we were delivering in conjunction with Eddie with the Ministry of Health, um, with NCQA, and with Wellington Institute of Technology, and we were providing a course, um, Year 13 NCA Level 3 course, for uh, students that wanted to possibly, not just necessarily work in addiction sector, work in counselling, youth counselling, youth work, and things like that, um, and we offered it across the country, and so that's pretty much why I'm here, and I'm also doing an online science QRI order, which is, um, there's not enough Māori, um, students going into tertiary education, particularly health careers, professional health careers. So we've set, we're setting that up through the Ministry of Health to get more young people to consider taking a career in, in, in health and things. So we were doing an online science tile, which was unfortunately was ruined by the earthquake because we were using Papua Nui High um, as the teacher. Um, so that's sort of fallen, fallen apart. And also we've got a mentoring program to mentor um, Māori students at university and also Māori students considering going to university because I was just the argument was we went to if we were to the school I said to the kids um, we were doing some research okay what jobs do do Māori you know do Māori um, have in at hospitals and the kids go oh, and this is this is Māori kids they go oh, oh cleaners and they're laughing and oh, the cooks and they were given all those jobs and they, they meet the caretakers and they laughed and said why have they got those jobs and out of their mouths because we're dumb men and that sucked. And that's the whole thing of what we're trying to do and trying to sort things out and things. So, and Kia Ora Haora is, is a Māori organisation that's running under the Ministry of Health. So that's why I'm here. But I've 20 years experience in education. I was involved with Farnet too. Wow. Things, so. Yeah. Until we kind of recruit another teacher, um, we're going to have to have a conversation about 
rather than just kind of getting information so you can pass that on to the new teacher coming in. So if you know a really, really good tutorial teacher out there, we are struggling to find the right one. But yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say that um, I like the ongoing nature of this kind of professional development. Your sort of n normal professional development, you go for one day, you get six hours of professional development, you get bombarded with all these ideas, and then you go off and you know you do all of them, you do some of them, you do none of them, but there's no follow-up and there's no, if you run into issues with it, there, there's no, it's difficult to get help. Whereas I feel with this, it, for, for me it feels like it's a drip feed. You know, you can work at your own pace and, um, and you get little information as you sort of come into the question, there's someone to ask. And um, I feel like, you know, that works, will work well for lots of stuff. So we've converted you, so to the our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just chuck yeah. in there? I mean, isn't that the way we want to do, set it up for our kids as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, so not deliver to them, but to drip feed them and they need to know the information. Yeah. And that's where the core lies, isn't it? It's with our students. Uh, that's that's the students that, like this young one that we've got coming through, we're going to have them be me prepared for them, that's how they're going to be learning, it's social networking and online learning, it's going to be part of, it is part of their life now, but yep. you've got your teenager, teenagers are in front of you. However, the kids, and, and us included at the moment, like that one touch, you know, we don't get that one touch, uh, that takes us straight there, we tend to get frustrated, but that is, that is how we think, and that's probably how quite a, a lot of teenagers are thinking. But we think now uh, down to what's coming through. Would well, they think the same way? Um, they, they, they might, you know, they will be might well. I see them operate at a private level. They'll be prepared to keep on going into uh, um, into this type of learning and not um, do like what I call it the one touch function. You know, like most teachers are there, they get the person you know, touch on it. Up, or three touches. Well, that's a, that's even a big step up, isn't it? Three touches. So, but at the end of the day, it is why why are we here? And uh, the basic main reason, or the core reason, is uh, to engage our students. And once we've got them engaged, it's for their achievement. So, if I can be an online learning, I I, I definitely believe it, and I'm definitely an advocate, but. I, I, I've only worked in a variety of schools, I've only worked in teacher education, this is a variety of schools in Christchurch especially, there is a tension in regards of infrastructure and mainframes within schools that can support the kind of stuff that we're actually aspiring to do, and, and talking to colleagues here, that's not uh, their limited experience, so I think we need to keep that in mind as well, that we aspire to do great things, but also there can be limitations. It's the daily reality for what we, we do, it's at full level all the time, he's got two guys will tell you. How many this one's paid for, and how many we actually get successfully implemented? Yeah, I think it was what Connor was saying before, and what we were just debating, and the other. But we, we could we could all start to stand up and say what we're doing and how we're doing it. But the thing that we really need to get out there is why are we doing it? Because if, if you're going to put this to someone so that they get it, and they say, yeah, that just makes so much sense, then that person will go and do that as well. I mean, all of us can say how and what we do, but why is it that we do it? And why we should be able to explain to someone we are doing this because, and you know, all great companies can say we do this because, and blah 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 blah, and people come on board and say, yeah, that makes so much sense. I'm going to join you. I think just to follow on from what you said, I mean, it, it, it was a question that was that was posed to me by the teachers at Tahara College. Um, uh, they were having a go at me. Um, I was talking about e-learning and about how we could. Can they go at you? They no, they were having a go. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they would have been <laughs> um, no, no, that was a while ago. <laughs> I've recovered. <laughs> and um, but what actually happened is I said, I said, no, hang on, stop. I said, in page on page thirty four of the new New Zealand curriculum, it says effective pedagogy, and it talks about e-learning providing new ways of learning. I said, all I'm trying to do here is we're trying to explore new ways of learning. So I think, and suddenly when I said, this, you know, you guys are, are, are stuck and you don't want to explore new ways, so you're just shooting it down. And they actually, 
The teachers actually saw that. They actually realized that we have to explore new ways of learning as part of the teaching as inquiry. So I said, you, got, you know, you've got to explore it. And I suppose that's what we're doing, you know, as part of this virtual professional development. We are exploring new ways of providing professional learning and development. So that's, that's, uh, that was one of answering one of the questions, why are we doing it? Because it's part of the New Zealand curriculum. We need to explore how e-learning can provide us new ways. That's the way, and that's what I took, and when you said that why, that's what made me remember that. That was one of the whys I gave. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're always that why. There's, there's got to be something that that person gets it. That I had some people in the other day talking from the um, uh, museums, and they were wanting to take their pieces of museum down into school halls and get them in all the schools to come in. And I said, well, what happens if you get this one? And I talked about the um, virtual learning network and the other pieces, and they said, oh, but people won't come in. You know, it's funny why we do it that way for the children and all that sort of stuff. And the lady actually said, that makes so much sense. She said, we're going to go back and get it that now. Whereas before, we just said, oh, we can do it this way. And she said, and, and you know, the first response was, well, no one can see what we can touch the thing. But after we've been speaking, she, said, she, she got what I, was, what I was talking about. She said, that makes so much sense. And now they've gone back and investigate how they can do that. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's talking about, you want the principals of these other schools to say, so much sense. My kids should be doing this, and that's that's the why bit. I mean, you can go in there and tell them what and how. That's the easy bit. The why bit is to make that person understand it and say yes. You want to change the way that you're going to do it. Yes. I think at university and um, tertiary education, it's, it's totally changing. <coughs> Cost cutting is going on right across the, a lot of the sectors, and, and the varsity is active at a big time. A lot of the courses are becoming e-learning. They're, they're going out there. They're scoping e-learning. They're you know, they'll tend to be quite people when you do it, like Lincoln College. They're out there doing the, a lot of e-learning courses. So these kids are going to come out of schools faced with e-learning. So why is the scaffolding them? you know, the big argument is the scaffolding them at primary school, intermediate school, secondary school, so when they go to university, they're all there. You know, that's a big, that's a key argument. You said why, that's a key argument. Why are you actually getting them learning? Yeah. Yeah. I understand why they're doing it, but they're still, yeah. Though in those schools you've got one poor bugger who doesn't do the whole lot in one school and that's just so frustrating you've got one person who's got some sort of IT knowledge in a school and it's his fault and that's the difficulty too you know. in, in our school yeah. <laughs> 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 the other thing is about um, you know like yeah you do, you do have it all over every now and then but it, the more like if you're doing it regularly then the times that it works outweighs that it doesn't and you kind of feel in general that it works anyway. Like I remember talking to some of my e-learning kids last year and even though we've had a few lessons where the bridge has gone down or whatever, the, the rest of it was what they remembered. They didn't remember the one or two or three where it didn't work. But if teachers go along with one, I know it's happened in our school, oh, this is when we got kicked out and then that's the one chopped off. But if they were students and their experiences and if you think about just human beings and the way we know 
one of the ways of getting your head around something is to actually do it. So if you're going to be a teacher who is going to be using all of the potential uh, as a facilitator of using e-learning, I, I would argue that getting, you know, getting in there, getting, you know, getting your hands dirty is actually a really great way of working up what are some of the barriers, what are some of the potential, what are some of the aha moments. Um, so professional development that actually does get in there and you, you actually do it, um, so it's learning by doing sort of thing, it, it is, it's pretty effective. I just, I, I had a, a very bad week this week with my year one teaching online where they said to me that if they, that what we're studying right now, that they couldn't do it because it was done online instead of face to face, like, you know, I would work from the class and blah, blah, blah. And, but when I stopped and I said, well, did work after, do you know what I mean? Because you only do an hour and of course, you know, it's still work after school and you know, you do your homework and, and they can do it 24 seven because it's really more 24 seven, blah, 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 blah. They said, of course, no, you know, because they've got, they've got a social life and I don't. And, and then they said to me, they were angry at me because I didn't spoon fed them. And they said to me, and that's the word they used and said, but you want, to make us independent. And I was like, yeah, actually, yeah, that's what I want to do. And, but I was faced with teenagers who, uh, they don't, yeah, they just, so whatever I do, and it, they still rather me to give them the answer. Do you want know I mean? to say, so to succeed in this year, this is what you have to do, two plus two is four, Learn that, you know, but only the four hours that we have in class. Don't do any homework, don't learn, don't use the video like I spend my Sunday night doing. And they said to me, but this is how we want to learn. It's just, you know what I mean? And, and uh, this is what I find hard. Yeah, but because they're 15, I get them when they're 15, and, I, and, and I'm not blaming anybody. And, and I, I, what have I done before that, and as a teacher, that for 10 years, that's their experience, do you know what I mean? And suddenly I'm like, oh no, don't do it. Like be independent and if you want to learn at 10 o'clock or whatever, do you know what I mean? And I find, this is what I found hard for me, this is a shift within the students. Uh, have you all got the same problem? It's just the mathematical that keeps that up. No, no, I have the same. You know, you try to get them to answer a question and they say under the rest, why don't you just tell me the answer? We get that at home. Did they give you an answer? So I'd, um, just it's surprising because we've been having that conversation with students who learn through video conferencing and online and um, I've, I've looked at the sort of the, the sort of this three key success criteria